all sawmills that I've owned typically have one band that they like to run best. Thanks for visiting our sawmill. Hey folks, Robert Milton here again, your favorite sawmill channel. Good to see y'all made it back for another exciting episode of Sawing with Robert Milton at Hobby Hardwood. Woohoo! <laughs> so some of you uh, really liked that video I made some time ago about the first five test. It's the one where I discussed some of the things that I look for when I am asked to help somebody troubleshoot their sawmill or what I look for on my sawmill right out of the gate to make sure it's cutting. If, these, if those first five things aren't right, you ain't cutting straight wood. So I'm going to do a follow-up to that, except I'm going to do the same thing with band alignment, except there's no reason for me to discuss band alignment and the fine points of that unless you have the right band on your sawmill. The sawmill band is the fundamental part of sawing wood. It's kind of like a fish hook. You can spend all the money you want on a boat, fishing rods. There's only one thing that matters ultimately about catching a fish. It's the hook. Same thing with the sawmill. There's only one thing that's actually cutting the wood. That is, of course, your saw blade. When somebody calls me up and asks me, hey, I'm having trouble, my, my cut's wavy. Well, the first things I'm going to ask, if not the first thing, is what brand of blade are you using? That's huge. Now, that's not because some bands are better than other bands. They are. Some are garbage. Some are really good. They're not all garbage, and they're not all real good. There's one or two that are better than others. But... Each brand has their own specific spin on what makes a good sawmill blade or band, and that lets me understand what you're working with. For example, wood misers, um, they use double hards, which they push really, uh, they push a lot. I don't really like double hards. I like silver tips, and there's a reason for that. Cooks. Uh, they've got some pretty good bands. I've used them before. There's not a whole lot of bands I haven't used. I've pretty much used anything out there. They have what's called a cat's claw, and that's not a bad band. Uh, I don't particularly like it that much, simply because I don't like the teeth, the pointy teeth on it. Uh, those have a tendency to get sheared off when you hit a nail, which means you're not finishing your cutting the log a lot of time. From my experience, uh, you're going to knock off about a half dozen teeth for every nail. Any decent sized nails means you're stuck in a log. Now, certainly hitting a nail is not something you want to do with your sawmill band. It's expected to hit nails, but what I at least want to be able to do is get my cut finished, get out of the log before I have to, and then I'll change bands. There's a lot of other brands out there. I guess the only ones that I really think you shouldn't get or I was at Harbor Freight one day and I, they had a box of sawmill bands and on the box it said, these were included with a sawmill, by the way, and it said, do not use these bands. I mean, seriously, <laughs> selling a sawmill, selling bands are right on a box that says, do not use these bands. So I wouldn't use Harbor Freight bands. There's a lot better out there. So the first thing I want to ask is who makes it? It tells me a whole lot about the geometry, it tells me a lot about what's going on in that band and what their engineering philosophy for clearing sawdust and whatnot is. Second thing I'm going to ask and you need to know is what kind of alloy is it? Is the alloy designed as a long flex life alloy? Is the alloy a very rigid metal? Rigid metals, by and large, will cut flatter because they don't flex as much. They will fatigue a lot quicker. So if you go, for example, with a double hard, it's going to have a much shorter fatigue life than the same thickness in a more flexible material like a silver tip. But some are 
uh, designed to be more flexible and last longer, and some are designed to be stiffer and cut straighter, and they will not last as long. The metal is just going to snap as, you, uh, as it goes around the band wheels. That's why some of the production mills here, they have larger band wheels because it increases the radius of the deflection and increases flex life. So if you and I were both running the exact same thickness on an LT40 and an LT70, my band is going to last longer than your band because it's not having to flex as hard. So that's a decision you have to make. Do I want it to cut flatter and be stiffer or do I want it to last longer? Let's cover hook, because that's the one everybody focuses on. Oh, what angle is it? Well, you know, okay. So, the way hook works on a bandsaw blade is the more hook angle, the more angle of the tooth, the more it's going to try to dig in. So, that would be similar to like a 13 degree blade. Very very uh, shallow angle, it's gonna try to dig in. The problem is it's gonna cut so deep. In my opinion, 13 degree bands are virtually unusable for any North American species that I've sawn because they'll cut in if I was cutting a hunk of bread, but if I'm cutting anything harder than that, they're gonna wave like the Gulf of Mexico. So on the other end are the four degrees. I, four degrees is about as steep as you're ever gonna want and they excel at extremely hard wood, like pecan and hickories. And the issue with them though, is they will help you cut straight, but they really tend to pack sawdust. And sawdust packing is one of the fundamental things that will keep you from sawing flat. If you're packing sawdust, you are, that sawdust is getting on the body of the band and it's driving that band. It's forcing the body of the band up and down and it's causing it to wander. Sawdust is bad. Pack sawdust like flour, you're not gonna cut straight. A little bit of sawdust where you're having to use a putty knife, that's not always gonna run you into the waves, but it's not good. What you wanna do is have almost no sawdust on your boards. And if you watch a lot of my videos, you notice I will talk about that often. Now, most of the time I'm sawing North American hardwoods. I like seven degree hook angles on pretty much everything I do. And Woodmiser makes three different types. They make a frozen hardwood seven. They make a turbo seven. They make a 747. They're all seven degree attack angles that have different gullets, different blade manufacturers. Uh, Cooks likes an eight. Is there much difference between an eight and a seven? I don't know, probably. I can feel it. I don't know if you can, but I can. There's certainly a big difference between a Woodmiser seven and a 10, or a Woodmiser seven and a four, or four and a 10. So just a degree of hook angle, you should be able to feel at some point in your sawmilling career. I can. I mean, is the, is the guitar in tune or not? You'll know it when it's right, but you have to hear it or you have to know it's in tune to know it's out of tune. thicker the band, the less it's going to want to flex. I like to run 055 thousandths thick. A lot of people run 045, some run 042s, there are some 040s, these are thousandths of an inch. You know, there, there's all kinds of different thicknesses. As a, as a general rule, the thicker the band of any alloy, the thicker the band, the stiffer it's going to be, the faster you can be able to cut. So why don't everybody just get thick bands. Well, the problem with that is the thicker the band is going to affect its flex life. A thick band is going to have less flex life than a thin band. A, a very inflexible alloy is going to have less flex life than a flexible alloy. So worst case, thick, inflexible band is going to fatigue crack much faster, have a much shorter life than a narrow, or I wouldn't say narrow, a thinner more flexible alloy. On the other hand, a stiff, thick band with an inflexible alloy is going to cut straighter than a band that's thin with a flexible alloy. There's a bunch of trade-offs in there. So that's something you got to worry about. Now let's get down to blade width. I like wider bands. Again, get as much metal in the band as you can you're going to cut flatter, all things being equal. The problem with it is the wider the band, the more body there is to contact the kerf of the wood 
Remember how these things work, right? You got teeth set, teeth set. The teeth are coming out around 30 thousandths of an inch, 25 thousandths of an inch, and right behind that is the body of the band. If you're packing sawdust, sawdust will get in there and dry up, it'll steer the band. The wider the band, the easier it will be for the pack sawdust to steer your band. You're basically removing the clearance. If, if your set is 25 thousandths of an inch on your teeth, if you build up 25 thousandths of an inch, call it, if you build up 26 thousandths of an inch of sawdust on that side of the band, that sawdust uh, is taking up more room than the set of your teeth and your band will get driven into waves. All that is a big trade-off. So I'm always a big fan. If you haven't done a survey of bands, get one or two of different alloys, different two sets, different thicknesses. Oh yeah, they're 30, 40 bucks a band. It's gonna suck. It's expensive. It's no worse than sawing your whole career with the wrong band, is it? Might as well just eat it up front. Get to your speed, put them on your mill, or get them on your mill, put your logs on and start mowing through them, try to go as fast as you can and saw straight lumber, push them. See which ones seem to be doing the best in your situation. Then you'll know which ones work. I've done that with every mill I've had. It just so happens most of the time, seven degrees seem to be the best universal for me. Um, but that's my mill, not your mill. Thanks for visiting our sawmill. Click on the links above to see more of our videos.